Okay, in video 5.4.1, we're going to look at factoring trinomials without a leading coefficient. Now, before we actually look at what that is, let's review a little bit on the FOIL method. Um, so let's take this example here and let's FOIL this out. So, of course, we have two binomials, so we can say first, outside, inside, last. We say x times x would give me x squared. And then x times 7 would give me 7x. Negative 4 times x would be negative 4x. And then negative 4 times positive 7 would give me a negative 28. Okay, and then we can notice the middle two terms will combine there. So it will give me x squared plus 3x minus 28. Okay, so just a quick review there of folding it out. Now, what we have on our answer here is this is a trinomial because it has three terms and it's a trinomial without a leading coefficient. So notice on the x squared right here, we don't have a coefficient on the x squared. In other words, we don't have a number that's in front of that. So we call that a trinomial without a leading coefficient. So there's going to be a big difference in trinomials with and without a leading coefficient. Ones without a leading coefficient are actually going to be a lot faster to factor. Now, the objective here in this lesson is to basically take this that we got right here and go backwards to that. Okay? And so, again, it's like a backwards process. So, let me do a, a sort of in general idea of what this is. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x squared plus or minus, and we'll use the word that, okay, just to make a point, plus or minus, let's say, this, okay? Now, the way I go backwards here to go from this and this is I work this backwards, okay? So I'm going to read it in this order. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for factors of this, okay? So whatever this number is right here, I'm going to look for factors of that number. So if it was, say, 10, is that 1 and 10, 2 and 5, okay? If it was, say, a number like 20, 20 would have a lot of factors, like 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5, and such, okay? So factors of whatever this number is that add or subtract, okay? And so what we're referring to is this sign right here. So if that's an addition sign, we say add. If it's a subtraction sign, we say subtract. So factors of whatever that number is over here, again, this number, that add or subtract to give me that, okay? So whatever that number is. So I'm looking for factors of, remember the, the names for these terms, quadratic, linear, constant. So factors of the constant that add or subtract to give me the linear term. Okay, and, and notice we're really not going to worry about the fact that you are going to have an x right here, but that's really not going to matter. Now, let's see if we can sort of get the idea and take the one that we've got and go backwards with this one. We'll look at several more examples. Okay, so let's just look at this part now. And let's see if we can go backwards with this. So now, again, I'm looking for factors of this number that do this, which would be subtract, to give me this number. Okay? Now, first off, let's do this. Let's get the x squared. That's the easy part. So all I have to do is get an x times an x. And so now all I have to do is fill in the numbers here that would work out to what we just said. So again, we're looking for factors of this number that subtract to give me this number. So really what we're looking for there is factors of the number 28 that subtract to give me 3. Let me write that out. So we're looking for factors of 28 that subtract to be 3. Okay, so when we say factors, we mean what numbers that multiply that give me 28, but if I subtracted them, would give me 3. 
Okay, so numbers that would multiply, that would be 28, that would subtract to be 3 would be 7 and 4. Because 7 times 4 is 28, and 7 minus 4 is 3. And so those are my magic factors, and I'm going to write them in right there. Now, later on, we're going to discuss what actual what signs actually go here. Now, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and put this one will be plus, and this one will be minus, and we'll discuss the signs here on the next example. Okay, but the, the main idea here is when you're factoring a trinomial without a leading coefficient, is you're going backwards. And so when I read this problem, I'm reading it this way, factors of 28 that subtract to give me 3. Now, let's look at several examples, and now we're going to start, start incorporating how did I know to put a positive there and a negative there, and so these are what we call the sign rules that we'll look at next. Now, we've got several examples here. Now, in each of these examples, and we, when we talk about a trinomial with a, without a leading coefficient, we talk about there's the first sign and the second sign. And so we look at this one, that's the first sign, that's the second sign. And notice that the first one, it's always going to be positive. And when it is negative, we'll, we'll talk about that later, how we deal with it. But the first one here is without a leading coefficient, so that one's always going to be positive for right now. Now, we're going to work backwards here again to get the factors. Okay, so I'm going to read it this way. So now, I'm looking for factors of this number that add to give me this number. So I'm looking for factors of 7 that add to give me 8. So numbers, two numbers that would multiply to be 7, but would add to be 8. So let's see, let's go ahead and get the D going. So we know we're going to have D times D to give me D squared. But what I have to do is I have to get two numbers here and here. They're going to multiply to be 7 but add to be 8. Again, factors of 7 that add to be 8. So factors of 7 that would add to be 8 would be 7 and 1. Now, let's talk about the sign rules here. Now, this is when the second sign is positive. You may want to write down the sign rules. So when the second sign is positive, that means the factors, okay, which was the 7 and the 1, let me say the signs, okay, here we go. So the signs of the factors will be the same. Okay. Now, does it mean that they're necessarily both plus or both minus, but they are the same? Now, let's discuss how do we figure this out. Well, if I'm going to fold this back out right here, I would have to say the last thing I would do would be 7 times 1. And so when I do 7 times 1, I want to get a positive 7. So that means, well, I could get that two ways. A positive 7 times a positive 1 would be a positive 7. Or a negative 7 times a negative 1 would be a positive 7. So when this second sign, the sign right here, is positive, that means the signs on those factors are going to be the same. Okay? Now, Again, they're either both going to be positive or both going to be negative. Now, let's talk about how do we figure out, are they both positive or are they both negative? Okay, so here's the second part. Okay, so if they're going to be the same, then the signs will be whatever the first sign is. Okay, now let's kind of go over and clear up what do we mean by the first sign? Okay, so the first sign here would be this one. There again, that's the first one. That's the second one. Okay, so this tells me that the signs will be the same and that they're going to be, both of them will be whatever the first sign is. So the first sign there was positive, so both of these would be plus. Okay, now we're going to do several of these. So if you didn't quite catch on here, you'll eventually catch on. Now I'm going to add this into this video here. When you factor, this is the most common type of factoring that you'll do out of all the factoring. It's factoring a trinomial without a leading coefficient. Now, let's look at example B here. So again, we're going to look backwards, and we're going to read it backwards. So I'm going to say that would be factors of 6 
that add to give me 5. So numbers that multiply to be 6, but add up to be 5. So let me see if you can think of those while I get the x going. The x part's always the easiest. x times x is going to give you x squared. So I hope you figured out here the factors of 6 that add to give you 5 would be 3 and 2, or 2 and 3, because the order really doesn't matter here. So 3 times 2 would be 6, but 3 plus 2 would be 5. Okay. Now, we got the factors in there. Let's, again, let's go over the sign rules. Again, we're looking at the, if the second sign is positive. So if the second sign is positive, then these two signs are going to be the same. So to get this 6 here, well, we could say positive 3 times positive 2 would be positive 6. Or it could be negative 3 times negative 2 would be positive 6. Either way that you look at it, those signs have to be the same. So they're the same because the second sign is positive. Now they're the same, and they're going to be whatever the first sign is. So the first sign there is negative. So both of these are going to be negative. Okay. Now, of course, I could, I could use my full method and fold this back out here if I wanted to check that. Now, let's look at C. So on C, now we're looking for, remember, factors of this that add to give me that. Factors of 14 that add to give me 9. So what are two numbers that multiply to be 14 but add up to be 9? I'm going to go ahead and put my x's in here while I do this. So that would be 7 and 2. Okay, so there again, I'm looking at the second sign is positive. So that means that they're going to be the same, and they're going to be whatever the first sign is. So they're the same, and then they're both positive. Okay, let's look at the next one. I'm going to change up the next one there a little bit. Um, we'll change that one there. Okay, so on part D here, our example D, now we're looking for factors of 22 that add to be 13. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 22, but add up to be 13. So I hope when you start reading these problems, you're saying this in your head. In your head, you're saying to yourself, factors of 22 that add to give me 13. All right, so that would be 11 and 2, right? Okay, 11 times 2 is 22, and 11 plus 2 would be 13. So we got x and 11, x and 2. There again, the x is going to come from because I have to get x times x to give me x squared. So we always see that in each of these problems. Now, let's go over the sign rules again. Since the second sign is positive, they're going to be the same, and they're going to be whatever the first sign is. So the first sign is negative, so both of them would be negative there. Okay, so kind of compare and contrast C and D. On all of these, the second sign is positive. So when the second sign is positive, the signs are the same, and they're going to be whatever the first sign is. Now, let's look at E and F. I'm going to um, change up F a little bit there so we can compare and contrast. Now, so on part E, all right, I'm going to see if you can say it to yourself here. What am I looking for? Okay, see if you can kind of fill in these blanks while I say this. So I'm looking for factors of what that is it going to be? Is it add or subtract to give me what? Okay, so factors of what? Nine, okay, that add to give me. 10. So let's go over that again. See, I'm looking for factors of this number that do this operation to give me this number 10. And notice that I don't say anything about the signs here. That's because we have the sign rules. So all I'm really looking at is just this part. I'm not even looking at the x there. So again, there's factors of 9 that add to be 10, so that would be 9 and 1. And if you wanted to say x and 1 and x and 9 in a different order, that would be okay because when you multiply numbers, the order does not matter. Now, so now let's go over the sign rules. So if this sign is positive, that means the signs will be the same, and then they're going to be 
whatever the first sign is. So both of them will be negative. Okay, now let's look at the last one. And so let's kind of fill in these, these terms here again. Okay, so let's see if you can fill in the blanks here. Factors of blank that either add or subtract to give me blank. So in part F here, we're looking for factors of 60, okay, that would, what does that say, add to give me this number, 23. So we're looking for factors of 60 that add to give me 23. Now in some cases, when you get into larger numbers here, the factors, they may not come to you. So one strategy in doing this here is if you don't know what the factors are, start listing the factors in order. What are factors of 60? Well, I'm going to start with 1. 1 times 60. Okay. 2 times 30. 3 times 20. 4 times 15. And if you needed to use your calculator here to kind of help you out with that, that would be okay. 5 times 12. Okay. There's lots of factors of 60. All right. 6 times 10. And I believe that's it. Okay. So those are my factors of 60. So, you know, if I couldn't think of the factors that added to give me 23, I could list them. And now we should see them that they're right there here. So 20 times 3 would be 60, but 20 plus 3 would be 23. So my factors are 3 and 20 or 20 and 3. So we'll say x and 20, x and 3. Now let's go over the sign rules. That's positive, so that means they're going to be the same, and they're both going to be whatever that sign is right there. So they're both going to be positive. Now, let's have this discussion. So notice that all these examples where is where the second sign was positive. So if the second sign was positive, the signs are, the, the signs are going to be the same, and they're going to be whatever the first sign is. Now, so you can imagine what would happen here if that sign was possibly, the second sign here, is possibly negative. So if that's going to be a negative number, then the signs would have to be different. Okay, So let's look at some here where the second sign is negative. Okay, So now again, we're still going to use the same process as we did earlier. Now here, all these have a negative sign right here. So what we're looking for are factors of 5 that subtract to be 4. So what are numbers that multiply to be 5 but subtract to be 4? So that would be 5 and 1. 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 minus 1 is 4. And you notice this time I said subtract to be 4 because this was a minus sign there. So it's a little bit different. Now, let's look at the sign rules for when the second sign is negative. Okay, so what's going to happen here is that the signs will be different. So one of them will be positive and one of them will be negative. Now we'll talk about how do we figure that out in just a minute. Now let's look at why they have to be different. If I'm going to fall this back out, I'm going to have to say 5 times 1 here and get a negative 5. So to get a negative 5, one of those would have to be positive and one of them would have to be negative to make that work out. To get 5 times 1 and get negative 5 here, again, one would have to be positive and one would have to be negative. So that's how those sign rules work. Now, so I know that they're going to be different. Now, how do I know which one is positive and which one is negative? Okay, so here's this, here's the second part of this rule. The first sign will go to the larger factor. So you can say the bigger factor. Okay, so let's see if we can apply this rule here. So this tells me the signs are going to be different, and this sign, that's the first sign, is going to go with the larger number. So out of 5 and 1, 5 is bigger, so this is going to be minus 5 and positive 1, because they have to be different. And again, this first sign right here has to go with the larger number. Now, what I do when I factor my trinomials without a leading coefficient, you might have picked up on it, I always factor so that the larger one comes first. You don't have to do that. 
But if you do that, what happens is you kind of get to this say, well, this just sign just comes down. And so if this one's negative, this one's going to have to be positive to give me a negative 5. Now let's go through these other examples. Okay, on part B, for example B, now we're looking for, <clears throat> let's see if you can uh, fill in the blanks here, factors of what number, and then add or subtract to give me what number. So we're looking for factors of 18 that subtract to be 7. So let's see, that would be 9 and 2. Notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my 9 first. Now you don't have to put the 9 first, but it kind of works out better if you'll do that. Now, here again, let's go over the sign rules. The second sign is negative. So that means the signs have to be different. So to get a negative 18, with multiplying 9 times 2, either it has to be maybe negative 9 times a positive 2 or positive times times a negative 2. Okay, so they're going to be different. And the larger one is going to get this first sign right here. So the 9 is bigger, so it's going to be plus 9 and then minus 2. Okay, here again, this is where the second sign was negative. Now, let's look at part C. So on part C, now we're looking for factors of 36 that subtract to be 16. So that would be 18 and 2. 18 times 2 is 36. 18 minus 2 would give me 16. Now, again, follow the sign rules. If the second sign is negative, that tells me that the signs will be different. And then the bigger one will get the first sign. So it'll be minus 18, because 18 is bigger, plus 2. All right, let's do D, E, and F now. All right, on D, we're looking for factors of 21 that subtract to be 4. So numbers that multiply to be 20, 21 but subtract to be 4 would be 7 and 3. So I have M and 7, M and 3. Okay, now let's fill in our signs. So the signs are going to be, are they the same or different here? All right, if that's negative, that means they're going to be different. And then, so one's positive, one's negative. This sign, the first sign will go in front of the bigger number. So it'll be minus 7 plus 3. Okay, all right, it's example E here. Now we're going to do factors of 55 that subtract to be 6. So that would be 11 and 5. So again, 11 times 5 is 55. And 11 minus 5 would be 6. Now here again, this is negative, so the signs are going to be different. And the, the first sign here, that positive, goes in front of the bigger number. So it'll be plus 11 minus 5. Okay, now on the last example, we're going to throw another one in here. Let's call this one a G. And we're going to compare and contrast a little bit on this one. So let's say we have on this one, let's say X squared. <clears throat> um, minus 7x plus 10, okay? And so we're going to sort of do these simultaneously here to, to sort of get a comparison. Now, in both of them, we're going to be looking for factors of 10. Okay, so notice I don't really say positive 10 or negative 10. I just say factors of 10. Now, notice the difference from there, though. On example F here, we're looking for factors of 10 that subtract. And then on example G, we're looking for factors of 10 that add. So notice whether or not to add or subtract the factors is determined by the second sign. Okay, That's again where you have to read it backwards. So now let's come up with the factors in both of them. And then we'll fill in the signs. So on F, let's go back and kind of start over. Factors of 10 that subtract to be 3 would be 7 and 2. C and 7. C and 2. Okay, now let's do that step on example G now. So now on example G, we are looking for factors of 10 that add to be 7. And so factors of 10 that add to be 7 would be 5 and 2. I messed up on the other one. Darn it. Go back. Factors of 
10 that subtract to be 3, it would be 5 and 2. Okay, so I kind of screwed that up a little bit. I don't know where I got 7 and 2 from. Now, let's talk about the sign rules. Okay, so in F, let's see if you can answer this question as I, as I ask you. What does it mean about the signs here if this sign is negative? Okay, again, you have to know the sign rules. If that second sign is negative, that means these two signs down here are going to be different. Because when I say 5 times 2, the result needs to be a negative 10. So 1 is positive, 1 is negative. Now, how do I figure out which one is positive and which one is negative? The first sign, so this one right here, goes to the bigger number. So it's going to be minus 5, and then so this one would have to be a positive 2. Okay, now let's look how G is different over here. So in G, now this we've gone back to where the second sign is positive. So what does it mean if the second sign is positive? If the second sign is positive, then the signs down here are not, the diff are not different, but they have to be the same. And then what sign is it then? So see that they'll be both positive or both negative? Well, again, it's whatever the first sign is. So both of these would be negatives. Okay, now be sure that you've written down these rules. Usually when people miss the factoring here, they don't miss the factors. What they miss is the signs. Okay, so be sure that you have this written down and you learn that really, really well along with this that I gave you here from this slide. Okay, be sure that you know your sign rules. The factors is the easy part. The signs here is probably going to be the difficult part.